I mean, about what, five minutes ago? Six minutes ago? It sounds like it's quite official at Hannaford to Vegas now. Um, so I guess no small talk. Let's just, let's just get right into this bullshit. Um, Vegas yeah. is going to employ the entire league by the time April hits. Everyone will be a Vegas Golden Knight donning them the Stanley Cup champions because they got rid of every other team. They're not into expansion. They're, they are decimating the whole NHL by just employing everybody. It's fucking unbelievable. Everyone except for Marc-Andre Fleury. Yeah, no, he, yeah, no, he, for nothing. Um, <laughs> holy fuck. We're about to see a back end that has Noah Hannafin, Alex Minivan Man Petrangelo, and Shea Theodore. Um, that's one of, if not the, I don't know, best mobile puck moving two way decor ever. Like all, like it's unfucking believable. And they're talking about an extension, by the way. So who else? Who are they gassing in the off season for free? Well, you know that no one is safe. If we've learned anything about Vegas, it's that like anyone that you think is like untouchable. Like, dude, watch Mark Stone or Jack Eichel could be traded this summer. It's unbelievable. Like, it's what, not, uh, I like, I can't even fathom it. But well, what they're talking what about you, the they're also talking the extension, but also that they're, they're not done yet. <laughs> like, what do you mean, dude? Uh, you know what? There's two teams that if they say they're not done, I completely believe it, and it's Vegas. And I guess there's three actually: Vegas, Tampa. And the uh, new Jim Rutherford, Vancouver Canucks, because he's never uh, done. That guy doesn't sleep. Yeah. We he gotta needs talk to about him this every second. future, every single future that exists. That's yeah, his. Yeah. Post. We'll talk about him after we, because I, mean, I feel like we gotta touch on Vegas just off the bat because they like, yeah. like. But uh, I just, if they end up like going out and finding a way to then get fucking Jake Gensel too, can you imagine like? Yeah, I could. <laughs> I know. I don't even know why I said, can you imagine? Because this is like, yeah, for, yeah. What are you, dumb? Yeah, of course I can. But well, good Lord, are they fucking loading up again? Bruce, like, if you're Bruce Cassidy, do you sit there like, who the fuck do I put in the ice? <laughs> you guys run the show. I don't care. Like, just, anyone go. Anybody go. I have the all-star lineup. You can all, yeah. I don't care. Go. Run around. Do your thing. Do the hockey shit. Um, it's definitely I, it's the, the parents. Like, ask your mom. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. Have they said what the actual package is? That's what I was just gonna ask you. Like, I'm like mind blown that this happened, but until we hear the return, I guess I don't know how shocked we can be because it could. Like, what do they have? They don't have a lot, by the way, of prospects. I gotta think Krebs is part of this, right? Krebs not, is in Buffalo. They already moved him. Not, no, not uh, Krebs. Uh, who's who was the guy that they didn't send when they sent Krebs? Now I can't even come up with it. Now I'm mushing everything like you problems yeah, yeah no fluid yeah i know it's contagious um but <laughs> i'm not sure because like i mean they've pretty much every first round pick they've ever like every kid that's ever been selected to the vegas golden knights you're like all right do you want me to actually put this fucking sweater on on draft day because like we both know i will not be here in anywhere from like six months to two years i will be somewhere else most likely they just they hate they maybe they just like get to know the kids after they draft and they're like, yeah, loser. Um, let's just go, let's just move this guy on. Um, yeah, I actually would, I should have pulled up their prospect depth chart just to try to throw like darts at the board to try to guess here. Um, it's, it's 5D chess though with them in the drafts, you know it. Like they're like, well, let's see, we know we're going to be working a move with Calgary and we know they like this kind of guy, so we're just going to draft him like two years ahead. Mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. never going to play here. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to start pulling up there, like just what they have for assets but while we wait for that to actually come in. But in the meantime, they also picked up Anthony Mantha <laughs> from, from Washington, who we said, we talked about this last week. If there is one place where I do think Anthony Mantha is going to look around and be like, Oh yeah, no, I'll try here. This is fun as shit. It, it is, it is, he can be a piece of shit and he is unbelievable. And that place is a madhouse. And he's just like, whatever line he ends up on, he sure. will be surrounded by 
all-star caliber players, like it's going to be hard for him to not light it up, assuming he gets the uh, the ice time. That being said, he is the number one player that would drive Bruce Cassidy up a fucking wall. Because again, we said this last week, he has all the potential in the world to be one of the premier power forwards, like dual threat offensively. I forget who they're playing the other night. Two on one, a ridiculous sauce pass on the tape. Like he is just phenomenal. And again, he plays that fucking hard game. He can be an absolute piece of shit. He beat the piss out of Nick Cousins. So I think he should go to the Hall of Fame immediately. Um, but my God, I mean, they had, it's like, hey, everyone said you have zero cap space, no assets to deal. Uh, what are you going to do? Uh, we're going to go out and get two of the best available players um, at their position, and we'll figure the, the rest out later. Like, I can't, I, people could get mad about the Vegas Golden Knights all they want. Oh. He Blackbird, I forget his exact wording, but he was like, Vegas could, t- like, at all times operates as if there's a meteor hurling towards earth. <laughs> like we're all going to die <laughs> and they just go scorch earth. They add everybody. So I mean, they are a problem. And I, like, I mean, it's, it's refreshing seeing a team just be like, I don't give a shit about like next year, two years from now, like we're going to go for this year. And they've just been contenders every year in their existence. So Outside of I, you know the one year where their entire team got hurt, um, but Vegas is just doing it again. These bastards. Well, aside from the cost to acquire Hannafin, my biggest fascination now is what does Kenny Holland do? Because you know this means he has to go like big swing. Like that, they're, they're gonna be meeting up in the first round, and they, they, they did their cannot thing. Cannot lose in the first round. They cannot. Well, well, Edmonton picked up. Adam Henrik, Sam Carrick from the Ducks today as well at a three-team trade. So Adam Henrik, like, I was aboard the trade for Adam Henrik training there last year, the year before. Last I year, dude, you there. were pushing it hard. Because you put him on a line where he doesn't have to drive offense, but you put him with, like, just top six caliber forwards, and he is going to score. He Like, he puts up points, and, I mean, he's cheap. Now he's going to be UFA. It would have been last year. I would have been on the trade more for, but at the same time, I mean, put him anywhere in the top nine for, for Edmonton. So that's a nice little pickup there. It's kind of like it's in theory should be a boost that they need. Cause I mean, outside of like, I don't know what three of their forwards, they have just zero offense. And that's like me being nice to one of what Nugent Hopkins or the Vander Kane. But other than that, it is the dry sidle McDavid show. Um, uh, whoa, whoa. We're going to disrespect Hyman like that? Oh, sorry. That's what I was thinking of. Uh, just, hey, 40 yeah. goals from, from a combined 40 feet away from the net, like, total. He is like he is scoring from in, – he did literally score from inside the net last year one time. It was unbelievable. But, like, but like everyone – the only team that could have made the that deal, that Zach Hyman contract, look fine is Edmonton because all he has to do is like get around the net and he will convert every single fucking time. He has other elements to his game, obviously, but like because it's Edmonton and the situation he finds himself in, he like, he makes that contract look like nothing. It'll we'll see what happens as the years go on here. But I mean, at the same time, like a fucking 40, he's going to score 50. So that's unbelievable. Is, Zach, I don't 50 goals. Is he the, Bigger grind, less defense wing version of Jewel Eric's neck. Like, can can you imagine having those two guys on the same team on separate lines and just knowing that you pretty much for like 40, 45 minutes of the game are going to have something like that in front of the net? Yeah, it's real nice. Like, it's just like, yeah, you put that guy in front of the net, there's a 60% chance the puck's going in off his stick or something. He's in, like, they're causing chaos and they're two big boys. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, for Edmonton, nice pickup. I still think they've got some serious work on that back end to do. Um, we'll see what happens here with the likes of Cody CC. Um, one guy I was intrigued to see if they would try to make work is also not available because, unfortunately, for the Central, Colorado's having themselves a nice day. Uh, they've picked up Casey Middlestat, Minnesota boy. Um 
from the Sabres for Bowen Byram. And I'll tell you, I really hope this is kind of the restart for Bowen Byram. I really hope so. It's just weird this year how it is not worked part of that was i think he was who was he playing with jack johnson for a lot of this fucking season that that also hurts um was that yeah that was just a one for one trade i mean if you're i love i love when the tweet goes out and it's one for one <laughs> they yeah, have to like yeah. clear that up because everyone's like what else i i don't yep. know man that one was weird to me because i get like the immediacy of it and i i think all in all avalanche made out great here with how the team looks now compared to it you know earlier today i just oh man that bowen byram is just such a player that it's so hard to move on from that talent even if you know he's having a supposed down year and i guess the other question is has casey middlestat figured it out like obviously up top like we have no questions that he sees and reads the game at that level but is this just like the the flash year and now going to Colorado now that he's gotten comfortable and acclimated, like maybe throws off what he's actually developed here? No, I mean, I think because, I mean, he did this last year. Last year, he said he was 15 goals, 44 assists, 59 points, like by far a career high. He's on pace to beat that again this year. He's already one goal away from tying last year. Um, he's got 47 points in 62 games now. Um, and I mean... In a year where Buffalo pretty much had nothing up front, he just was the one guy that was like producing the same as he was last year. So I do think this is okay. the way. Like, and again, we've talked about this before with him too. Like, there was absolutely zero reason for him to go into the NHL right away. Like, that was cl quite clearly not the right decision at the time. Right. Um, and I feel like so many times when guys get rushed in the league, it ends up just never panning out. And the fact that not only did he like stick it out and it seems like now he is hitting as the player that he was projected to be why he got drafted where he did. It's also just impressive that he did that in Buffalo considering how much of a shit storm Buffalo has been since he got there. So like props to Casey Middlestat. And now he is on a team that's got cup, cup aspirations. Another team like we we're talking about with Anthony Mantha, like no matter where he gets spot put in the lineup, He's got around all-star talent. Like, yeah. So I like that pick of a lot for them. Obviously, it hurts to lose Bo and Byram, who, like, you know, you could have given him some um uh god damn it. Playoff MVT MVP looks the year that they won the cup and Kale McCarr just did his thing. Like, if Kale McCarr wasn't there, I think Bo and Byram, like sneaky, was pretty close to being their best all around defenseman that whole playoffs too. Um and so now, I mean, you look at that Buffalo back end now, too. That's a nice little pickup for them, but probably a little restart. Um, so it's a, it's interesting that both of those players get moved, obviously, for each other. But, like, I would have expected if one – if those players moved on, like, the team would have got back picks, but no, no picks involved. But, I mean, at the same time, I mean, I would take Bowen Byram over a package of, like, a B prospect and some picks. Um, and I would probably do the same, or I'd say the same for Casey Middlestad as well. So I think Casey Middlestad also is go, still in RFA at the end of this year. So there's some flexibility there. Um, so that's a real nice pickup for Colorado. And they dump Ryan Johansson because, I mean, that just was not working. He's playing on the fourth line there. And they bring in Sean Walker. That's a nice pickup, a real nice piece of business. Let me pull up the actual full trade. Yep, Sean Walker to the Avalanche for Johansson and a fifth and 26th. No, that's not true. Johansson and a first in 25 for Sean Walker, fifth round pick in 26. There we go. That's the actual trade. So that's two real nice, like, kind of not necessarily under the radar, I guess, but like two names that were being floated around, rumors, and two, like, definitely highly sought after players that. They didn't necessarily have to like break the bank per se. Um, but Sean Walker has been unbelievable for the Flyers. There was talk about extending him. Instead, they picked, they end up extending uh, Nick Seeley, who's also been just a real reliable bottom pair, like prick, but also solid defensive defenseman. Um, so just some real nice business from Colorado as well. Um, and just like a weird or interesting, at least 
strategy so far from Philly. <laughs> like, I don't really know what, they're, what else they're fucking up to. But, um, yeah, I mean, you're looking right now at Vegas and Colorado, and you're just like, oh, man, they are loading up here. Um, and I would not be surprised to uh, see them at both end up in the – in the uh, Western final again, but Dallas, I don't know. Dallas, man, Dallas is where I'm at. Yeah. I mean, either way, the Western playoffs are going to be fun as hell to watch. Nothing. The East is just like, all right, like, come on, like leave us somebody like Jesus Christ. Um, But like literally all the moves outside of like two or three have been in the West and it's these top dogs just loading up and it scares the shit out of me. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, you just mentioned Dallas picks up Chris Tanov, the certified beauty. Did we talk about that last week? Did that already happen? Yeah, we talked about that last week. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and it looks like Logan Stankoven has no plans to go back and continue leading the AHL and scoring. He scored again last night, dude. He is, he yeah. just like, whatever ice he graces with his presence, on it, he just is like, I will put the puck in the net. It's going to, that's what I, it's the only thing I do. It's all I do. Yeah. He's unbelievable. Like, what a fucking player. Um, said it before. Someone he's gonna make a GM look real smart. Um, and I mean, as if Dallas needed anyone else in their their scouting right. staff pedigree to be like, yeah, this guy too. Um, <laughs> really needed a tire pump. Yeah, really. Yeah, we were really really needing one there. Um, let's see, no update yet from uh, what the Hannafin package actually is. Yeah, let's see. No, no. We'll, we'll we'll circle back to it <clears throat> a bit later. We'll give it time to formulate. But yeah, that. Those are obviously the biggest things happening here. I got to ask you, though, Z, there's been a lot of talk about breaking up the, honestly, the most fun goalie tandem we've ever seen. Like, do you think it's happening? And how will you react when that does occur? Um, I don't know. Like, I'm at the, I mean, I am on the ultimate uh, like fence sitting position at this point where I just like, I actually have no, I, I lean towards no, like that is a, that is a massive decision. And like one that could absolutely kill them, no matter what the package is that comes back. Cause I mean, at the same time, if they do move Omar, ideally it's a pretty good package that comes back obviously, but like, then it's you have Swayman, and everyone's like, "Oh, what about Brandon Bussey?" He's like, "He's played zero NHL games, so I, I don't know, or maybe he's played two. Actually, maybe last year he played two, um, two or sure. three. I don't know, but I feel like that is quite. If you're like wanting to make a run in the Stanley Cup, I feel like you better be goddamn sure that like Swayman's going to put up Con Smythe numbers, so." It's a big risk, but it clears the cap space they need. It gets you back. Pretty nice package, obviously. I don't know. I I, it, I just have a hard time seeing them doing it, but it is that one big move they can make. That or like a Jake DeBrusque move. It seems like there's something there. I mean, then, then they have a couple other yeah. Dude, what's... players that aren't going to get the much but can be involved in like some kind of package, I guess. I don't really know. Yeah, I do what do you make of the rumors that like not only is Vancouver very in on Gensel, but part of the whole shuffle might be that they're somehow sending Lindholm the way of Boston in some kind of three-way trade. Yeah. And I guess their goal is to end up with like the Gensel and then send Lindholm to Boston. I don't really, I have no, it's, but so this is what we talked about. We're, we're talking about Rutherford there. We, everyone always says like, he can't, have like the trade deadline in the horizon. He can't see it in the horizon without playing trade. That guy has withdrawals if he doesn't like make a trade in like 12 every 12 minutes or so. He's like, ah, let's fucking just do this. Like Lindholm, <laughs> I think he scored in his debut. He scored again last or like last night or the other night. And like he's like, no, no. He's like itching. He is literally itching. He's a crackhead, but for trades, it's un- I was dying. Oh, hang on, no, hang on. Does it change though because of the Elias Patterson extension? Like was Lindholm brought in because he was also kind of that hedge on, oh shit, if Pedersen like screws us over and he wants to leave, we can throw money at Lindholm and quasi replace him. And now that's not Probably, needed. I mean, like I, I would assume that that was 
at least a small percentage of like the like that probably factored a little bit, but it's also a crazy strategy at the same time. It's like, but if he does sign for the year, we could just we could just fucking move Wendell. Like we could just trade him again. We could <laughs> welcome. Goodbye. Like, you know, it's fine. Um it, it's again, like I just think if their thing was <laughs> just in case Patterson does not sign. Bring Lindholm in, we'll give him some of that money. And then Pedersen signs like, oh, thank God, let's get rid of this fucking idiot. <laughs> like, we don't want this guy here anymore. It's crazy. Like, Jim Rutherford is an absolute maniac, and I respect the hell out of that. That's another, another GM I'm, very, I'm a big fan of just because he's like, yeah, I will nonstop just trade everything that moves. He's like trying to trade guys that have teams he's not even GM for anymore. Like, he's just looking to move anybody and everybody. Um, but Dude, I he, don't know what to make of that. No, I want Hoaglander, Lekaramaki, and a first for Gensel with whatever fucking retention needs to happen. Mm. And guess what? That's... If they if they manage to pick up both Lindholm and Gensel at a deadline, when they're already the best team in the Pacific, I mean, uh, by record, I guess. But dude, imagine Jake Gensel playing with Elias Pettersson. Hmm. In the playoffs. It's so much fun. It is it's terrifying. So much fun. Jake Gensel is absolutely phenomenal. And like, He's, it's not even his talent, man. Cause like he is absolutely talented. No one properly appreciates how smart this fucking guy is. And it's so subtle. And you hear guys like Jesse Marshall, who I'll always pump his tires on here. Like, I think that guy's one of the best writers at the athletic. And he flat out said, like, I can't even throw together clips for you guys of how he does it because he is so subtle in how he hits the soft spots, gets to the right place, so that he's just perfectly primed to score goals if someone can hit him with the buck. Mm -hmm. And, of course, playing with a guy like Crosby makes it a lot fucking easier, but guess what? Elias Pettersson has the same pedigree. Like, he can be that guy that just sets Gensel up to torch people and torment them in the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was about to say with Getzel. Like, yeah, he is phenomenal, but he is legitimately one of the smartest players in, in this league. Like, he is phenomenal. It, I, it's just crazy seeing where Pittsburgh is now. Like, you don't need me to tell you that. But in theory, bringing back, like, Latang, Malkin, making moves that they made. Like, they were, it was supposed to extend the... The window here, bring in Carl. It's just, I don't know what it is. But like, mm. I looked at that started, like the lineup they iced the other day, and I was just like, that was bad. <laughs> Holy shit. Like, what happened? But you know what? Like, everyone's like teeing off, and especially that absolute mush, Mike Grinnell. Like, oh, Pittsburgh, I said from the beginning, this Carlson trade was awful. They should have spread the wealth and, like, spread that money across multiple guys. Well, dipshit, how it works when you actually offload really shitty contracts as part of the trade to bring in Carlson, where you actually shaved money off of your salary cap total to also bring in the guy that just won the Norris Trophy while getting rid of, uh, let's see, three bad contracts in the process. That was the mm -hmm. win. That is why it happened. That is why we love it. Not because we expected Carlson to come in and be the savior. Now, granted, did I expect to see more? Yes. And I think that's more to do with Pittsburgh coaching and maybe some of the big guys getting kicked off the power play to let Carlson do some more work. But beside the point, that was a great move. I stand by it. There is nothing wrong with that Eric Carlson trade. It all worked out perfectly there. Where I see the big issue, because Malkin's had a good year when he's been engaged and he's had line mates. He has not had line mates, period. And you look at Latang, like he has been adequate. And guys like Tristan Jerry, everyone was like very critical of that signing, which I was skeptical, like doing that sight unseen with uh, the injury history he has. He's been unreal. Like him and Cross yeah. single handedly trying to drag this team into the playoffs. And I think the real problem and the shortcomings were he signed like four depth players of which I would have loved to have one, maybe two of them, but he basically signed four guys that did the exact same thing and made them far and away the oldest roster. They have no yeah. youth. It's all old players. That was a problem. Like Eller, 
Achari, like good players. And I know that like Dubas has a history of being interested in those guys in general. You can't bring in that many older guys for your bottom six, bring in a guy like Riley Smith again. Like I like him on paper and I thought that he'd actually be a really good fit with Malkin. It just didn't quite mesh. Dude, he's for sure getting traded back to Vegas. Watch that happen. Um, I don't know. I think that people are criticizing and saying like, oh, they were supposed to contend this year. No, they weren't. They were supposed to be competitive. And I thought that they would make it into the playoffs, but like no one looked at this team and said, yeah, Stanley cup front runner, you know, definitely have to step back and see if Dubas is even capable of rebuilding this team because he has never been in a rebuild. He has only been a buyer. He's basically been Jim Rutherford, except Jim Rutherford is like doing seven lines of Coke. I just, I don't know. I think that he definitely deserves criticism. I think people are criticizing the wrong moves though. And I think that it's pretty like reasonable to say, let's step back and watch what he does with this Gensel trade, what he does this summer. I'm still very like open-minded to what's going to happen next, especially when there's already like rumors out there that Crosby wants to sign like another six years there because he wants to work through the rebuild and be like the the KG vet when they're contending again. Yeah, the hundred point per year KG vet, like the fucking guy <laughs> is insane, dude. He is like he is phenomenal too. Yeah, um, yeah no, I think that's right. Um, last thing on Pittsburgh is like, how much trouble is the guy like Mike Sullivan? And you think it's hard to say because the reality is he and Dubas seem pretty well adjusted to each other. I think the ownership group loves him. Yeah. And again, I like how long have you known me and how long have I just beyond gone yep. to bat for him? This year's a bad year. And uh, it's tough when you signed him to the extension that they did. Also tough. If you don't necessarily have the next guy to bring in, I don't think he is decidedly the problem yet. Next year is probably when I'm going to find out, like, does Sully have to go or not? Which, I'm sorry, if that does happen, I really hope Bill Guerin just snatches him up instantly. Like, yeah, that is a guy that can take your team to the next level. And maybe the, the message is worn out, or maybe he's just run out of ways to try and squeeze the last drop out of this team. I, again, am still critical of him, but... I think the the shortcomings on the power play have been very problematic. And I do think that there are holes in the roster that have been tough to navigate, but yeah. this is the first year that I'll definitely step back and say, okay, Mike Sullivan is very, very human. So yeah. I don't think he's in trouble or on the hot seat. He's, he's kind of like hot seat adjacent. Like he could definitely work yeah, himself yeah. into the hot seat when I never thought that that was possible this early, but I don't think, there's any temperature check as of today. Yeah. Regardless, what I mean, what a track record since he got there. Like unbelievable. But yeah, just was curious as a uh, just curious what you thought as a Pittsburgh. But let's go. All right, we can kind of just I guess go over the last couple fairly somewhat big names. Um Tarasenko to the Florida Panthers. Um, <laughs> pretty funny. I'm Very sure weird. they'll just find. Yeah, I get the, a, a couple of my bu buddies, my senators fans buddies. They're pretty bummed out. Um, I mean, he. It feels like he's been on and off there. There's been games where he, I've only watched so many senators games this year. There's games where like they've got nothing going, and all of a sudden he just does the Vladimir Tarasenko thing of just taking the puck and ripping it top shelf from the circle. Um, cause he's my God, can he still shoot a puck? Um, and when you look at Florida, you want to talk about a team that can just put it on a T for him without him having really to do much of anything. I can see him putting up plenty of goals for the Florida Panthers who are an absolute problem. I feel like they hand up. Yeah. I, yeah. That's about well, as yeah, me too. I've ever I, me, I was me too, so buddy. down on them. I was so down on them. And uh, me now too. I am very hot. Like that. It's them. Did and you see everyone else in the East? Was it yesterday or maybe two days ago? The Barkov assist 
<laughs> yeah, that was nuts. Where he took the puck out of midair, falling over, settled it backhand onto whoever's tape that was. I don't even I couldn't even tell you who scored the goal. That was one of the greatest assists I've ever seen in my life. Alexander Barkov is on an all-time heater. Like he's been phenomenal pretty much since he entered the league. Um right now that man is on a whole other level like holy shit what a fucking season he is having that guy is insane um but uh, we'll be see uh, so let's see the picks for uh Tarasenko conditional fourth and 24 and a third round pick in 25 i mean i think the panthers will be fine with that um so they have I don't, <laughs> yeah i know it's literally <laughs> Um, let's see. And then an interesting one, kind of, I guess, Alexander Wedberg goes to the Rangers. Interesting player, like has some secondary offense in there at times. Sometimes he is an absolute ghost. He's another one of those guys, but you know, I think mm -hmm. the Rangers, that's not a bad spot for a guy like him because there's plenty of guys there who can also feed him pucks. He's a decent playmaker in his own right as well, but he's not necessarily driving the play. I don't think he'll need to in the, in New York. So we'll see how that kind of pans out. Not, not necessarily like one of the top dogs, but a decent enough pickup, I mean, makes you better. Um, and I think it was, let's see, a second round pick in 24. That's kind of steep. Uh, and a conditional fourth in 25, whatever. Um, any other ones that I miss? Or there are definitely a few that I missed. The biggest one, Curtis McDermott <laughs> to the Devils. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, yeah, let's uh, know that. that I know. Too, another coach killed by goaltending. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Um, trying to think. I know that there were a couple that I'm missing. It's gonna drive me crazy too. Actually, uh, da, da, da. Sorry, while I, I try to remember, well, while, while I try to remember who. Player. Yeah. Well, a couple big names left that I'm very curious to see where they go. Obviously, again, so we had just mentioned, but. Um, I think a sneaky one that I think plenty of teams will be very interested in. He's still scoring some goals on a dog shit San Jose Sharks team. Anthony Duclair. I haven't seen any big rumors necessarily. I think today's kind of been dominated by these crazy moves. So Dude, that's, um, that's, that's another what I would one. Like to see Florida get instead of Tarasenko. Yeah, if they just brought back the Duke. Dude, why not? I know. Uh, just, just like, just still... like Riley is going back to. Vegas, I'm convinced of it. Yeah. I th well, Vegas was one that I was curious to see if like if they were really still not done, I wouldn't be shocked if like Anthony Duclair could end up there. He plays with I would be I just the north. So. <laughs> yeah, that's it, I guess. I don't know how many teams are actually afraid of that anymore, though. No, it's um, it's not it's not a matter of indivision, it's a matter of like I fucking hate you so much. <laughs> Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, the Sharks um, don't really have rivals, but Vegas is absolutely their rival. Oh, yeah. Um, I was just, you know, again, he can yeah. Yeah. score wherever he is in the lineup. My God, is he a phenomenal north-south high-speed player. I think, again, he could find himself on any one of those lines in that top nine and be, be a more than – uh a more than capable producer and a nice addition, like secondary addition to, like, Anthony Mantha and Hannafin. Um so I'm curious to see like where where a guy like Declare ends up. Um, you're right though; it would have been really fun to see him go back to Florida. I mean, not for me; I would have hated it. Um, but that would have been fun to see him go back there and just do exactly what he did there before. Because um, I mean, I think he's still got decent numbers this year in San Jose. He's got something like 15 goals. My God, are they bad? Holy shit! Um, but the big one on on the back end here, Jacob Chickard's still available. Um, and I know plenty of teams are very interested in his services. So oh, I'd love I don't know. Do you get, yeah, well, yeah, I think anyone would, yeah. uh, <clears throat> where I'm trying to think where would be the best spot for him to end up that, I, that was actually the one I was curious to see if, they, if Vegas was going to make a big, like, yeah, bring up Vegas again, but cause they were very Not interested in before. Not after Hannafin. Oh, uh, it will. Well, yeah. But that's why I'm saying right. that would have been the team I was looking at before. Um, not anymore. Well, though, if there's one team that fucking pull that off, right, right. <laughs> no, no, mini minivan gets sent for Chikrin. Yeah, 
Z is terminate. immediately, immediately a Vegas fan. <laughs> oh my god, they terminate the contract. Actually, they just tear it up. Yeah, clear, clear oh, over trade man. sheets and space. Um, no, it uh, trade is one for one. Eric Carlson for Jacob Chikrin. That is fun. That's fun for that both sides, right? Very fun. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, that's very fun for both sides. Uh, oh yeah, hell I don't yeah. Know, where where else could he fit? I mean, depending on how short term you're looking at it, right? Like, do you, it's hard not to look at Florida, or yep. I guess. I don't know. Dark Horse is probably the wrong way to put it because I still don't know how they consummate a trade given their lack of assets and just their whole cap structure. But Tampa was big in on Hannafin. I don't know. This seems like a pretty solid consolation to go after. Um, yeah. But they're probably not making a move like that unless they're confident they can extend him. And I'm guessing Chikrin is not going to be taking team friendlies. I think he's going to be looking for uh, the, the Brinks truck to be backing up a little bit. Yeah, I and I know, I know Tampa Bay was very, and they've been at them before, um, but I mean, I'm curious about. Well, no, they've probably got plenty on that left side there. Actually, well, he plays both sides. I mean, like Detroit, because um, I I'm very curious to see what they have up there. So, do you know they want to do? I don't even know what their they're... cap situation is. Oh, I think they've got. Plenty of space. Yeah, three million. Sure, plenty. <laughs> that counts. <laughs> okay, whatever. Um, but yeah, that's another one. But sneaky, most intriguing player for me, just because I think there's some team that's going to probably give up too much, although he is going to put pucks in net. Uh, Frank Vitrano, I feel like, is prime for someone to just be like, fuck it. Like, first round, sec, I don't care. Let's like do it. We want the, some guy to score goals. Like, we're just going to do it. I was going to say... <laughs> I was what I was like, honestly, fucking New York might do it. Like they might do it again. They might bring it back again. Um, but Frank Matrano, I mean, I think he's almost at 30 goals. Um, he's been one of the guys at the whole league been pretty interested in that, but I feel like he is primed for someone to shell out like maybe not a ridiculous package, but a package where you're like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> like, really? Uh, but I mean past few years he's setting career highs and goals i mean god he that's another guy that can rip a puck plays a hard game too defensively i he cares about as much he cares as, uh, about defense as much as i do which is zero um but i mean he was great for new york in the playoffs was it last two years ago last year can't remember um but that's one guy i'm very curious to see where uh where he ends up um because i do feel like he is prime for someone to shell out like a like a funny package him and uh uh Bushnevich. they might Bushnevich, i think should get a big return and i guess st louis is looking to potentially even retain up to 50 percent just to increase the offer uh that guy is a fucking stud um so if i'm a team looking for scoring depth responsible to a game that plays a hard game and St. Louis is willing to eat 50%. I'm willing to put up a pretty decent package for a guy like Pavel Bushnevich. Cause even when St. Louis was in the dark days last year or two, he's been a stud. Like I think even the other day sucked, he put up like 30 and 30 at least. Um, again, like, can pretty much give you a little bit of everything and he is a fucking prick to play against so i love Pavel bushnevich and i think he should as, again if they're going to retain 50 percent of his deal i think you could end up with a pretty nice package for him i like him a I was lot gonna say, i think they're expecting a pretty nice package so i think that's kind of the yeah. hold up i think there's a lot of teams interested i just and you get another year on his contract as well so i mean like that's a that is a real nice that's a real intriguing ad for sure um anyone else that you're looking at anyone else that you were uh, thinking about for me it's honestly less about individual players than it is watching the teams right like seeing in response like again i gotta imagine edmonton is gonna do something just to respond to vegas I just know Jim Rutherford is definitely not done. And the East is interesting to me because 
it's kind of the opposite of last year, like you already said. Like all of the moves have been in the West. If one team ponies up and takes one or two big swings, like that could totally shift the landscape in the East because it is still relatively tight. Like I don't expect this, but like Pittsburgh, for example, could very feasibly still make the playoffs. Like no one's eliminated. Again, they won't make it, but like I just anyone that steps up and makes a big boy move and honestly kind of interested to see if New Jersey can find a way to make the Markstrom deal happen now instead of this summer because that could be fun. It is wild that he was like legitimately like not hiding it pissed off but that deal didn't happen like <laughs> which is all like oh well, fuck, that sucks. <laughs> he's pissed off because they came to him and asked him if he was okay yeah, yeah, yeah. and then it didn't happen you know right like it's more like don't no, yeah. get me thinking about living somewhere that's not here and then yank that dream away from me yeah yeah, yeah. oh don't get me wrong i'd be pissed too but i like it's wild to me that he was like fuck you guys <laughs> you fucking assholes. but i get it um try to think any other last minute or last ones i one thing on the east though i feel like they are I wonder if that's team on Friday that all of a sudden every team just starts like rattling off last minute, just because I mean, at this point we have what a day and a half left. Like it does feel like given the fact that we're here and there are still plenty of moves that every team in the East probably still wants to make. I'm just waiting for the, for the, uh, for the damn to break and see who, who is the one that actually pulls the trigger first. Cause like, that's when it kind of gets wild. Um, and at least it should be a little bit more of a fun deadline day than it was last year. It's like, yeah, everyone's pretty much done. <laughs> like actually, it was, we, everyone did it. The one that still does intrigue me, and we don't have to spend much time on it, but there's been enough talk about him, even though it seems unlikely. UC Soros mm. it, it makes too much sense. Like, I know you don't want to derail what the team is doing because you want to go into the playoffs, but, like, the team is very, very – like open about the fact that this is a rebuild. They've got a scar of coming up. Saros has had a little bit of a down year, but he's still got enough equity that teams are going to pay well for him. Like why not make a move like that and still try and eke into the playoffs? Cause they're not beating any of the teams in the West. We just talked about it. Like it is so top heavy. There are six teams that are well above the rest. Like, do you really care that much about being primed to lose in six instead of four or five? Right. Yeah. And I mean, Barry Chots is not an idiot. Um, he is not. I'm sure they're going to be like, all right, like we're listening. I mean, but LA is the fucking... team, right? Right. Yeah. It's just crazy. Like think if LA, instead of trading uh, for, you know, Pierre-Luc Dubois, if they sent that exact same package for UC Soros, but did that before the season uh, again in kind, they're in a way different place right now. Like that's a team that we're probably saying is better than some of those West juggernauts that we've been talking about. Are we not? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, coming in, like I think everyone was pretty high on them already. So um, yeah. And, and, with the caveat be like, that eh, goaltending could be a problem. <laughs> like, well, here we are. <laughs> Weird how that happened. Can't wait. Kim Talbot wasn't the solution. Uh, nah, I feel that's, bad. That's I love Kim I, I, I'm an asshole. I would absolutely love to see Gustafson or Flurry get traded to LA just to see them <laughs> supplant him and just have it go full circle. They both go. Yeah. <laughs> they both go. <laughs> he ends up back. Yeah. Uh, fuck. Um, Oh shit! Yeah, I mean, LA would be the team that's probably. Like, I will, yes, please. We'll give you. I, I think they still have both their first round picks next few years. So, I mean, how? Yeah, I think so long. Yeah, yeah, I think. I mean, I would imagine, unless they do get a king's ransom, nailed it. Utah's <laughs> probably stays in uh, Nashville. Gotcha. I'm sure they would. They're probably staying on to him, but, um. Yeah, I mean, off the top of my head, I can't think of any of the other big ones that they're still on the board or we haven't talked about yet. I still am. I, the one thing I said this before, like what Philly's up to, I'm so, so intrigued. <laughs> like, they're like, ah, we'll fuck it. We'll get rid of some guys. Just uh, seal it 2 7. No problem. We'll keep that. We'll keep him around. Yeah, good for you. He could, that's a guy that could have picked. They could have got a, they could have got a nice return right there. 
for I don't think I don't ceiling. think that uh, Tortorello is willing to let him go like that. Tor- he's like, wow, well, no, through and through. He's like, yeah, you're gonna dismantle my team, whatever. I'll allow it. I get it's like the expansion draft. He gets like four protections, and Sealer was two of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, you can have you will trade, you can move anybody off this roster, Danny, but we are not moving Nick Sealer, Nick Delorier, or Garnet Hathaway. Thank you. All right. The guys that play hard. That's it. The only untouchables on the Philadelphia Flyers, baby. <laughs> um, yeah, I think they'll do it for the deadline. It's, so it's that new Philly identity where they ha- like change the hex code by like two on that orange. <laughs> yeah. It's just so different. Um yeah, I, I think uh, that's a good chance for us to transition. Again, if anything else pops up, we'll circle back at the end of the show here. And certainly, I'm religiously uh, checking the updates for the refresh. Yeah. 